All right, Tour de France 2018 starts tomorrow, so I'm just gonna go do a bit of rundown through the stages and pick five stages that I think you should watch. So we got the first couple stages, sprint stages, then we've got a team time trial, then I believe there's a, a lumpy stage, uh, and then up the Mieux de Bretagne, and there's also one, I believe, uh, stage four, I think it is. Uh, then the rest of them, again, are pretty similar sprint stages, then we've got a cobbled stage, then we've got a rest day, then we hit the Alps, uh, going up to Alpe d'Huez and uh, La Rosière, which should be interesting. The stage seven, stage ten, sorry, is actually got a downhill afterwards, uh, and then these are some sort of lumpy stages, not really uh, any GC implications, I believe. Uh, anyway, and then stage, and then after the second rest day, we then have we hit the Pyrenees, a downhill finish. Then we got a 65k finishing up the Col de Portet, sort of sprintish stage, could be a breakaway. Uh, this again is a very hilly day, and then we have got the team time trial, uh, the individual time trial, and then we just got the classic classic stage to Paris. Uh, so my first stage that I think you should definitely watch is going to be stage nine, Arras to Roubaix. Now this is a very interesting stage because it has, has a lot of cobbles. Like in the past couple of years, they've had some cobbles, 2014, 2015, they've had some cobbles, but really the cobbles this time are like properly serious cobbles. And there's a lot of them. There's no five star sections, unfortunately, but there are some big ones. So you can see it from the map here, Probably the beginning of the stage won't be mega exciting, but you know, halfway through more or less should get pretty exciting. You can see there's a lot of density of cobbles around this area here, uh, sort of this last last couple of kilometers. Uh, Mons en Pavelet is also a, a classic one, uh, and Campan en Pavelet are both ones in Paris Bay, which can be pretty decisive. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty looking looking forward to these cobbles. Just be interesting to see how the lightweight climbers can do on the cobbles. It should shake things up a lot just because there'll be so much fighting for position. People might get mechanicals um, and it's just going to be absolute hell on the cobbles. This is what Matt White believes. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be great, great stage to watch. Uh, next stage, I believe that it's going to be absolutely fascinating is going up Alpe d'Huez. Now there's a stage before which goes up La Rosière, but it's only 6%, so I'm not sure how exciting that will be. It will be the first mountain stage, um, the stage before this, but I, I'm not sure how crazy it will be. Um, so we could see on this stage, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty decent boy. I mean, it's 176 K with a lot of climbing, um, three main mountain paths, passes, sorry, Col de la Madeleine, which is 25 kilometers at 6%, which is absolutely brutal. And then we have another one, 25, 29 kilometers at 5%. Both of these aren't really going to, I mean, trying to split a peloton on 5% gradients is pretty hard to be honest. You have to be pretty strong because the, there is a big draft at the speeds that these guys climb at. They'll be climbing this. Uh, Col de la Croix de Fer, probably an average of 25 to 26 kilometers an hour, and maybe for the Col de la Madeleine between 20 and 24k an hour, more or less. It's hard to tell exactly, but that's roughly the speeds they're going at, and there's a good draft, so there's not going to be too much happening, but outdoors, which is 13.8 kilometers at 8%, uh, and a lot of hairpins, which obviously when you ride red hairpins, you accelerate out of the corners, so that's a lot, also gains, puts a lot more stress. So you can see the Col de la Madeleine, although it's but 6% gradient isn't too crazy. Um, there are some steeper sections, as you can see here, 9% um, 9, 9 for a kilometer, 9.5% for a kilometer. So this is really gonna tire a lot of people out and buy outdoors. I mean, every single French bloke who's gonna be racing wants to win up outdoors, maybe a pub Arnaud de Marc, because he knows he can't. But like, literally everyone wants to win up here. So it should be a really exciting stage. Will the breakaway go? I don't think so, because the GC teams probably wanna, wanna win up here um, in order to, you know, just, Winning up Alpe d'Huez is a big statement. So anyway, it'll be ex exciting to see what happens here. So you can see the Col de la Croix de Fer. Again, it's got some steeper sections, especially this last part, but it does have some downhills. Um, and then Alpe d'Huez, again, you can see the last part is not as steep, but these earlier sections, which are sort of 10%, they really will strain a lot of people. 11.5% for a kilometer is pretty brutal uh, at the end of a stage. So that should have enough damage uh, in order to cause some big splits. And that's really what you want to see. You want to see people attacking. You don't want to see people just riding on the wheels, which is what happens when they don't go up super steep climbs, um, well, there's just no incentive, but outdoors, there's always an incentive to attack. So that's, again, stage 12 is gonna be an exciting one to watch. And now we have, the next couple of days are a bit interesting, not really, I mean, just, I don't really know why they put them in, I guess they just have to, but there's a couple, like, not mega exciting stages. Anyway, stage 17 is gonna be absolutely just crazy. Um, there was an 80 kilometer stage last year and that was nuts. I watched, a, oh no, maybe it was 100 kilometers. I watched a whole stage and that was when like Lambda got in the break with Nita, with uh, Contador and um, Quintana and they were just loving life. Bargui was there as well. It was absolutely perfect stage. So this is gonna be a really, really good stage. Again, just because it's so short, everyone's gonna be going full gas from the bottom of that first climb in order to see if anyone's on a bad day. Um, because I mean, for these pro riders, two hours, which is probably how long the race will take more or less. It's not very far for them. Like they can 
go full gas for that period. Um, so the first climb is 15 kilometers at 6.7%. Again, it's got some steeper sections in there, um, so it should be good. I don't think it, was, it, it could split up, but I feel like there would be one or two people who will not feel good on this day and could get dropped on that climb, and that's the end of their day for the GC. Then we've got the Col de la Val Valle Rohan. Uh, again, pretty steep, seven kilometers at 8%. You can see there's some good parts at 10%. Again, if you're not feeling good, it's just not going to be a nice day for you. And the last one, the Col de Porte, is absolutely brutal. 16 kilometers at 9%. Um, yeah, it's not going to be nice. Um, but if you're not on a good day, again, as I say, it's, it's not going to be good for them. And they will be losing a lot of time. So it's going to be exciting. There's going to be fireworks. There's going to be no one hiding back. No one's going to be like, oh, you know, we'll just leave it. It's like everyone will just be going full gas from the bottom of the climb. And we'll see how everyone, what state everyone is in at the top. And then they go descend. As you can see it, descend, not much flat, then climb, then descend, and then climb. So it's going to be really exciting. I'm really excited to watch that stage. Uh, I have said excited a lot in this video just because the Tour de France does, does uh, have a lot of excitement in my life. do quite enjoy watching it just because it's the one time when everyone else actually focuses on cycling. The racing isn't always the most exciting, to be honest. I often find the Giro does have more exciting stages and the Vuelta, but this, this sort of style of racing... It's quite different to the general Tour de France racing because they're picking, okay, the climbs aren't mega, mega steep, but they're steeper than the you know normal ones. There's still good drafts on these, um, but it's just going to be good because what you'll see is people not just going full gas because they'll know they'll be able to expose people. When you've got 200, like 20K in the mountains, it's like you physically can't ride full gas the whole time. Like it's just not possible. So then people will be able to draft and then, and, you know, it's not gonna, nothing's crazy is going to happen until the last climb. But this, you can imagine if Froome's feeling great and so he realizes one of his rivals is feeling bad, he'll put the whole team on the front and just destroy them. And because it's so up and down, teammates matter far less. Like if it's a flat, if it's a lot of flat in between the climbs, then you really want a team. But here it's literally descend. Like I'm trying to figure out if we can see how many, like 13 kilometers of flat. No, not even 13, maybe like five, five kilometers of flat in between the climbs. I mean, it's like, that's so not that important that if you're feeling strong and you've got a couple, like two or three people with you, you could definitely solo this from the top of the climb. Like it's, it's gonna be very, very exciting to watch uh, and see just the, how it pans out. All right, so stage 19 is also gonna be very exciting because it is one of the last stages in the Tour de France. And it goes up like every climb in the Pyrenees in this like partic particular section. Uh, and it's gonna be absolutely brutal. So you can see here, they start in Lourdes and they end in Laurent. Um, and it's going to be a great stage. So you can see here, we've got a lot of categorized climbs at the uh, just throughout the whole stage, really. Um, so these first ones, Cat 4, is not going to do any damage. The first one we have is Col de Aspin, 12 kilometers at 6.5%. This is in the 2016 Tour de France, and Steve Cummings took the win uh, after ascending faster than Nibali and everyone else descending and then winning. So you can see here, the Col de Aspin is this part here. Then you sort of descend in a bit of a valley. Decent descent, but it's not really like... There's like maybe four, five K of proper descent. The rest of it's sort of rolling valleys, not great descent. Then they just turn left, Stroh goes straight onto the Col de Tourmalet, uh, which is again, a pretty brutal climb. 17 kilometers at 7%. It really does uh, take its toll. I have done the climb, both these climbs actually. Uh, and then after the Tourmalet, there's a bit of a descent. And then we've got the Col de Bordier, which is a second cat climb. So nothing absolutely nuts, but it will tire the legs. And then it's one last dig. If you're Richie Poor, you're, you're Bar Day, and you really want to get that podium, you really want to get the win, you've got to launch on the Col de Albisque. 16.6 kilometers at 5% might not sound like mega because it's not, but people will have to go like balls to the walls if they want to try and get a podium on this. And I mean, the next day is the individual time trial. So if you're Quintana or you're in the yellow jersey or someone who's not as good as time trialing, they're going to be trying to get time. If you're a time trialist, you're just going to hold it on. It's just going to be absolute chaos. So again, you can see the colder tourmalate at this moment in time. Pretty easy at the beginning. Has some steeper sections. Uh, but generally, you know, after from sort of 6K to 17K, you know, there's 11K of solid climbing. Um, and it's, the average from there is actually a lot higher. You can see it's, it's more like sort of at 8%, 9% for um, 11 kilometers, and that, that actually sounds a lot harder than what it really is, 17 kilometers at 7.3%. It, it definitely the first bit, you won't really be feeling in a peloton that much, um, but it is a tough climb. So you can see here, this is the, the finale, the final amount of climbing on the Tour de France. So we've got the Col de Bordier, so there's a good launch pad here, 9% uh, on this last climb, descend, and then this part here of the Col de Obisque is gonna be pretty decisive, I think, because if someone manage, does get managed to get away on the top of this and then just it's quite steep here, not crazy steep, but enough. And then there's the descent, and this last part here is, I guess, is your last launch pad of your Quintana, and you want to try and get time before the time trial. And I think 
It's annoying it's not a, a mountaintop finish, but potentially that might, could make it even more uh, sort of bold and the riders more bold because they know that they've got to risk everything. They know they've got to attack. There could be some real early attacks on the Col de Tourmalet potentially just because people know they need to get away. They need to get a lot of time. Uh, so it will be a very interesting and uh, exciting stage, as I've said multiple times. Uh, I just, I, it's very hard to predict what will happen. It could be a complete snooze fest if Chris Room's in the yellow jersey with Miles. But I don't think this tour doesn't have too many decisive stages like in the mountains. So if people really need to do need to get time or they want to get top 10 or they want to get top like top three in the podium, there's going to be a lot of different battles going on. And then the last stage, just the individual time trial. Uh, again, depends sort of on the GC, but for me, it's just going to be absolutely great because if Chris Rune's in the jersey um, or not in the jersey or Tom DeMuller's not in the jersey, good time trialers, they're going to be trying to get it back. If there will be other people who are like holding on if they're in the jersey or whatever, it's always good having a pretty much last stage time trial. And there's a bit of a steep part, one kilometer long, but has gradients of up to 20%. So that is going to be pretty exciting to see going up 20% gradients on their time trial bikes. So I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you will enjoy the Tour de France. I'm not sure what footage I'm going to be bringing because I can't bring any footage. So the videos will be interesting and I'll try and use as much creativity as possible in order to deliver content about the Tour de France. But anyway, I hope the Tour de France is exciting. I hope we have some attacking racing. And I hope Chris Froome doesn't just get into the jersey on stage like three on the team time chart and just hold it from then. Because let's be honest, that's happened quite a lot of times in the recent Tour de France's and it hasn't been the most exciting racing. But anyway, cheers for watching and I will see you in the next video.